Hey, this is Nick, and today I'm here to review The Innocent, uh, the last film directed by Lucchino Visconti in uh, 1976. Uh, film Movement is uh, bringing it to Blu-ray as of July 14th, 2020, as part of its Classics label. Um, it premiered uh, in Cannes, out of competition, uh, two months after Visconti died of a stroke, uh, as I said, in 1976. Uh, if you're familiar with Visconti, he's one of the major uh, Italian auteurs who won the Golden Lion in Venice for Sandra, and won the Palme d'Or at Cannes for The Leopard, uh, which many consider to be his masterpiece. Um, However, uh, The Innocent seems to not have the same kind of uh, reverence as a lot of his other films. Even uh, the film he did uh, right before uh, his finale was a conversation piece, which reunited him with Burt Lancaster uh, in Start Selvana Mangano. Uh, I, I think that has uh, received more of a resurrection than uh, The Innocent, which uh, pairs him with Giancarlo Giannini, uh, Laura Antonelli, and Jennifer O'Neill. Uh, of course, Jennifer O'Neill is the Brazilian actress that uh, was in Cronenberg Scanners and Summer of 42. Uh, Giancarlo Giannini, this was uh, kind of a, in the, mi the middle of a very pivotal period for him. Uh, he was in a series of uh, very popular, celebrated Lena Wertmiller films. Uh, he'd won Best Actor at Cannes for Love and Anarchy a couple years before. He was in Swept Away. Uh, he was right, just about to be nominated for an Oscar for Seven Beauties. Uh, and yet, this was not the cast that Visconti wanted. Uh, apparently, this was a project that he uh, meant to star Romy Schneider and Alain Delon. Uh, he even offered a role to Charlotte Rampling. Um, it doesn't feel like he uh, didn't get who he wanted. It's a very sumptuous, uh, visual, uh, aesthetically pleasing experience, as a lot of uh, Visconti's films are. Uh, the set direction, uh, set decoration, the interiors, uh, it's a very sumptuous film. Lots of um, red uh, brocade interiors and uh, fur-lined couches that are as fun to look at as the actors. Lots of very intense uh, close-ups on Giannini. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to know that this he, he wasn't actually his first choice. Uh, but it really uh, boiled down, it's kind of the same plot as something like Nancy Myers. It's complicated. Uh, based on uh, the 1892 text, it's uh, about uh, a philandering uh, aristocrat, uh, played by Gina Giannini, uh, Tullio Hermel, uh, who's having a flagrant uh, affair with Jennifer O'Neill's Teresa. Uh, his wife seems, you know, as women of her time, can't do anything about it. Uh, however, when he notices that Juliana, uh, his wife, has uh, sort of come to life again after a, a fling with a celebrated writer of the period, uh, becomes jealous and becomes uh, finds her desirable again. Uh, as that writer dies and he learns his wife is pregnant, he assumed he uh, insists that she have an abortion, she doesn't want to, uh, the child is born, he's, he's fallen in love with his wife again because she's become his mistress, but he wants her to kill that baby because by loving him you love his father. Uh, so it causes a lot of strife for them. Eventually, of course, he sets things up to where the child is exposed to the elements and dies, uh, ruining their relationship. He tries to go back to Teresa, she doesn't want him anymore, and he shoots himself in the head. And that's the end. Um, so it, it feels like a, a fitting uh, finale for Visconti, uh, you know, from the dam to Bellissima to uh, the leopard. Uh, Death in Venice. This uh, was shot by Pasqualino de Santis, who shot Death in Venice, which, uh, you know, arguably is a, a more notable film. But uh, if you like any of Visconti's films, this is definitely uh, something to seek out. Uh, also, Massimo Garotti from uh, the Patriarch from Pasolini's Teorema uh, has a notable role early on in the film. It's just a very sumptuous, beautiful film. Uh, and I, I am a fan of Giancarlo Giannini, so it's uh, nice to see him outside of. Um, the Wurtmuller films that he is popular for at this period. Um, overall, I give the film four to five stars. The film movement's um, release, which features a video essay from Evo Bloom, um, I would give three out of five stars. Thank you.